Hockey Whisperer, Dead, Buried, and Gone. Oh, it's Judd's yeah. Hockey Show on Part 2. It's Judd's Hockey Show Part 2 of Mackie and Judd. Oh, so Judd's I figured, show? I figured, Judd, I would go through the YouTube comment section from our autopsy we did on the Minnesota Wild a few days ago and pull some of those comments because there's some great talking points still off that episode that I'd love to bring out. Uh, let's start with this one from Mr. Rocky, who says, I believe the next three years of Wild Hockey will be pretty ugly. The Parisian Suter buyout hits has their hands tied so badly that it will be nearly impossible to improve the roster. Point blank, Judd, black and white here. Are the next three years of wild hockey going to be ugly? Are they okay. going to be bad? Okay, I'm going to give you an, a bit of an open-ended response here because I don't want to assure that. So, like, I, I'm not going to sit here and be you like... You want me to do old takes exposed here in a couple they're months? They're going to be terrible. Well, I just don't <laughs> think it's fair. I don't think it's fair. Um, but let me tell you right now, I believe that the wild is positioned for that time period to not be great. They're, they're not going to say that publicly. Don't blame them one bit. But, you know, Dex, let's put the pieces of the puzzle together here, okay? The Wild, to their credit, it didn't work. It blew up. It sucks. But the Wild made moves that, that at least took a step to pursue a championship mm -hmm. this season, right? Mm -hmm. um, they don't have that ability, almost certainly, the next three years. Uh, it hurts next year a lot. It gets worse the two years after that. Um, let's just say I think that in somebody's drawer, in the in in the drawer of somebody who works in St. Paul, I think there is a potential plan where the next few years might yield some high draft picks. Um, I'm not saying that's plan A. But I am saying I think there's a there's a realization because look, the Wild is not uh, uh, champing at the bit to trade your guy Fiala. It's not like they're like we want to trade him so bad we hate him. Okay, disappointing playoff, no question about it. But he needs to be traded because they can't afford him. Right, they can't afford him. But yes, um, that comment I think hardcore Wild fan will say that comment's stupid. It's not stupid. Hopefully it doesn't come to pass, but Declan, my opinion at least, is there is a potential that if things don't if things don't break right, um, that this year will be this year will be the most enjoyable regular season for a while. Your thoughts? Uh, I think they can still be a competitive team. I don't know if they can get 114 points again. Yeah, they um, can. I'm, I'm going to tell you right now. I don't think they can. I don't think they will. Can they be competitive? Can they flirt for the wild card? Can they be in the playoff picture? Yes, they should be able to be in the playoff picture. Man, uh, but look, man, man it's going to be tough. tough. You you only have uh, $69 million, nice, in effective cap space for next season. Yep. Uh, the the other thing that they can't get into the habit of doing, and, and they I don't believe they will do this, but... Um, you know, they have picks in every round of the draft this year, except for round seven. They have yep. their first two picks in the 2023 draft. They have all their picks in the 2024 draft. They're going to be in a position where they have to hit on those first round picks mm -hmm. because it's going to be cost effective players. It's going to be using Matthew Boldy. It's going to be using Marco Rossi. Um, it's going to be, have to find good, effective players with low cap hits. Um, yes. Because they they literally, they literally can't build out a roster because right. 14 and 15, 16 percent of their salary cap is tied up in buyouts. So can they remain competitive? Yes. Will it be ugly? I don't think so. But I, I, I don't think so. It's I would potential. agree with that. Yes. I would agree with that. Now, do you um, I, I do think the Fiala trade that they're pretty confident that they can get a nice haul back, which could be a high first round pick in this July's draft. So and. Here's why. So here's why, though. I think it gets dicey. This team has proven they don't like to, and it's probably smart rush guys. Um, and so they would like to develop guys, which is absolutely fine. I sort of like that, but that means that they slow cook them a bit. So they're not going to. I don't think that they're going to rush their their draft picks from this draft into the lineup opening night next season. Mm -hmm. Here's a second question off that though because it's a topic that you like to talk about and I think have been right about lots of times. What are we talking about also from a season that was a lot of fun and really good as far as regression goes? And I'm talking about Hartman, mm -hmm. Goudreau, mm -hmm. goal scoring wise, probably Felino. Like, like how much do, do we have to brace for the regression of certain players who very likely had career years? And I don't think that you can go into the next year counting on 
the same production from said players. Yep, regression's inevitable with a lot of those players. Hartman and Felino being probably one and two. Um, no, Zuccarello is a year older, but I still think if he's playing with Kirill, he should still be an effective player. I don't know if I have another career season like he did, but he still should be that 50 to 60 point distributing, facilitating forward that he's always been. Um, but you're right, that regression's going to hit this team like a ton of bricks. It will. Um, can that regression still level out and still be, uh, still, still kind of, Frankenstein itself into being a competitive team is, I think, the the, the bigger question there. So I think it's an playoff, interesting spot. I think they're a playoff bubble team at best next year. Because uh, that conference is tough, too. It is. The West is awful. Or uh, uh, a gauntlet. It's it's uh, hard to get in through. Uh, Dennis says, bringing Flurry back as the number one might make next year unwatchable. Billy G's pretty... Billy G's petty favoritism was shown unacceptable for me. Dennis not buying what Bill Guerin uh, has been selling so far. Kind of a hot take from Dennis. I've loved what Bill Guerin's been doing. And if they want to bring back Flurry, I I'm fine with that. He's not he's not a Vesna winner anymore, but I'm fine. Like, is he an average goaltender that can that can bridge a gap? Yeah, absolutely. I'd bring him back. How do I feel about this? Okay, so first of all, they went all in with a guy who on Judd's hockey show. We said several times, do it. Make the trade. They did. Um, did Mark andre Fleury uh, take a step towards helping them win the series against the Blues? Absolutely not. And they rode with him, and I get it. Do I think if you went back and, and reworked this and Cam Talbot started game one, do I think that this thing goes six, seven games and the Wild wins it? No, I absolutely don't. So I'm going to defend Bill here and say this. It certainly didn't work as planned, but I don't think that Cam Talbot, especially if they don't make that trade, because remember, until the trade, Talbot was scuffling again. Talbot was not playing well. So it didn't work. There's a lot of other things personally that frustrate me about the, the first round loss to the Blues beyond goaltending. Yeah, they didn't lose to the goaltending. They lost because of special teams. And they lost because... Kevin Fiala was, was well, a ghost. And, don't, and, and let, don't discount coaching. Um, Craig Berube continues in St. Louis to push all the right buttons, mm -hmm. to change things on a moment's notice, to do things to help his team win. And as much as good as a coach as he was during the season, Dean Evason was, if you did analytics on coaches, he was a minus coach in the playoffs. He did nothing till it was too late. He did mm -hmm. nothing until it was too late. A little bit of positivity here, though, in the in the comment section on the wild feedback. Uh, Vasker says we've got Tyson Jost, and he is for, he for sure will be the replacement for Fiala, and I believe it'll be a good one because the fourth line is the wrong place for him. And then Django uh, follows up in our YouTube comment section and says Boldy Rossi Jost would make a great line. I I bring back Tyson Jost, man. I and I and I Jost elevate him. I, I, I elevate winger? him out of that winger? fourth line. I think, well, yeah. I mean, if it's with Rossi, then yes, he'd be a winger. Um, he's probably better served to be a winger. But yes, I would. I love that idea. Boldy, Rossi, Jost. We love line combination on this show. I really like that idea. All right, here's my first thing. I am giving Rossi on day one an opportunity to play with Carell. Ryan Hartman, I don't see it, man. I don't see it. Regression's going to hit, and he's a great story, and, and he has a place on this team. But his salary is far more commiserate with the player that he's ordinarily going to be. Marco Rossi spent the entire year essentially in the American Hockey League. And that's great. That's fine. But I give him a chance. He's got the skills. Let's find out. Let's find out. Um, I just, I found it. So on Jost, the one thing that I find intriguing about that is Russo continues to, in, in his stories, sort of float Jost as a possible trade ship of some sort. So mm -hmm. I'm wondering, and I'm not reporting this, and I'm not saying I like it. I'm just saying, okay, Greeny. Right. Mike, Mike usually, Mike usually doesn't float things without knowledge behind the scenes. Correct. Like, like he presents them as his own, but he's talked to people and sort of has a feeling, and or has flat out been told as a possibility. I'm curious what the future holds for Tyson Jost. Educated speculation that uh, our friend of the show, Michael Russo, likes to do. educated speculation. Yeah, it's we, very good, and, and it's no problem. Look, I. A lot of the times, our, our reckless speculation does come from an educated spot. Yep, I'm just saying he doesn't usually make up things like, let's say, we do at times. So the Tyson Jost being 
floated around as a chip to clear cap room intrigues me a little bit. Uh, I believe it's Evangelist. A Evangelist? A-V-E-N. And yeah, no. that one. No. Yeah, I know that one. Whatever you said. Okay. Anyway, he says, if the Wild weren't in salary cap hell, Ryan Hartman would be an obvious trade piece. I agree with this, actually. If the Wild weren't in cap hell, I would capitalize on that trade. He's so cost-effective, I don't think I would move him. But if 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 there was a piece I, I, I could you. I could move if they weren't in cap hell, I wouldn't be opposed to it. I like what so, he's thinking there. So you would trade him in that scenario to, mm -hmm. like, ca to, to capitalize on, on the fact that, in your mind, Easily. again— to go back to the word regression is coming easily. Yeah, you know, I uh, could see that. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. I do think he could be a very good third line center. I've, this isn't Justin. I forget who said this, but he but he wants to point out a Judd comment here. He says, "Judd, now you're talking. I'm totally against re-signing Nick Delorier, who is an example of sacrificing skill for a presence." I said Delorier is a goon from day one, which you disagreed with, and now I hear Declan calling Delorier a goon. Part of the buyout was culture. Best part of it was the vision of a faster and more skilled team. Delorier doesn't fit that vision, and he brought nothing to the playoffs. I will agree on the last part. He brought nothing to the postseason. Yeah, I, nothing. I, I hesitate to call a guy a goon. I mean, you've got to be, in today's league... A true goon? I don't know about that. But, um, yeah, I, I mean, he didn't... He His presence keeps opposing teams a little bit more honest, probably. Yeah. But, yeah, that playoff call is right. And, look, I just... I loved it when I felt like the Wild had four lines that could really skate. I really like that. And so they they've certainly have guys that are teetering on being either with the big club or Iowa they have guys that have that speed. So it just intrigues me when your fourth line can really come in and buzz, right? Just yes. buzz the net, buzz buzz the zone, four check hard, four check hard, but <laughs> off of speed as opposed to trying to to use your weight. I, I don't know. This is tough because I get why they made that trade. I think he was a great guy in, in the room. I think... Nick did a, a great job there, but um, I hesitate to use the word goon. The word goon is a nasty word in today's league. Reckless speculation. Some reckless speculation here from Justin. He says, trade Matt Zuccarello and Cam Talbot. If we can add a few seconds, at least one of those guys is going to pan out uh, well by the time the buyout's finished. Yeah, Matt's has a full no-move clause, and I, I really don't. Un I, I, he's not going anywhere. Trading Talbot's an option. For sure yeah. an option. I still think Talbot gets dealt. Mm -hmm. I, I think there's a very good chance. I think there's a very good chance. I think if Flurry, I think if Flurry comes back, Talbot's gone. And I think Flurry, I think the Wild, Bill genuinely loves him. So I think the Wild wants Flower back. I think the Flower is going to probably ask the Wild to wait, and he's going to suss out Pittsburgh, because I think if he can go back to Pittsburgh, it, it would mean so much that he would probably do that. But if the Penguins are like, ah, dude, we're good, which they very well might say, then I think he comes back here. And if he comes back here, I think Cam is gone. Um, look, the stuff with Talbot's wife, it's going to be dismissed publicly. It can't be dismissed totally. It can't Correct. be. That's the way people felt privately. And and she put it out there, by the way, thank you. But um, the team and Cam, I'm sure, couldn't stand that. But the reality is this. The decision to go with flower for the first five games um was a vote of no confidence in a guy who plays a position at which you need confidence so i think if flower comes back i think cam's gone matt zagarello has a full no move but more importantly declan kirill kaprizov loves him and the last thing i'm going to do is trade a guy kirill loves so uh two years back Two years back, I would have, I said that contract to Matt's was stupid. They shouldn't have done it. A no-move clause. I believe Fenton paid him a million more than the next, or he, he gave him an extra yeah. year than the next team that was trying to get him. The point being, though, Kirill Kaprizov loving Matt's, to me, means Matt's is staying, and I ain't going to complain about that. I agree. 
Uh, last one here. Alex from Russia says, The Wild is a modern-day Frankenstein. This team will never win anything despite the best efforts of Bill Guerin, who turned out to be a solid professional. What do you think about the Wild being a modern-day Frankenstein, Judd? I don't think they're a modern-day Frankenstein. From Russia? Is that what you said? Uh, Alex from Russia. Uh, our run of our Russian, our loyal Russian Alex, listeners. Alex, you're awesome. Kirill. Thank you. Thank yeah, you thank very you, much. Oh, Kirill is fantastic. Thank you very much. Um, I hope he's safe and sound there. Hope he is. Uh, as far as that goes, Frankenstein, I don't know about that. Um, it, it's an interesting, I get what he's saying, and it's an interesting thought process. Um, I wouldn't go that far, but I get the frustration. I get the frustration. Uh, but yeah, I, I don't, I still think this, how can I put this? I still think there are elements here that are 1,000% on the right track um i'm still trying to conversely get over my disappointment of the playoff and here's what really upsets me dex the more i watch the playoffs you, you know game one abs and blues right abs win and everyone's like oh this series is done and then the blues make adjustments and they come back and they're so gritty and so tough and so mentally strong and bennington standing on his head for the first two games and the blues come back and win in colorado and I think to myself, I really got fooled again. I'm an idiot. I really thought that the Wild was far more on par with this this time than previously. So I'm still trying to recover from that uh, because it's just so disappointing to watch this next round and understand that the teams, and it's not just talent because the nice thing now is with Kaprizov, this team definitely has some really, really nice talent. It's more so how they're wired. They've got centers. So I wouldn't call him a Frankenstein, but I get the disappointment. You? Totally. I wouldn't call him a Frankenstein, no. You should be disappointed by how this season finished and whatnot for sure. I, Frankenstein's like piecemealing together a monster. Um, it's more like Vikings, right? Like Kirk, yeah. was the, Kirk was the Frankenstein experiment for the Vikings. Yeah, I, would, I wouldn't call him a Frankenstein by any means. But yes, be disappointed. And I, this, this offseason is going to be very interesting. I don't think it'll be as hot and as, uh, as crazy as other ones but it's going to be interesting to see how it plays out. I will say this. I do think that if you think the Wild is going to come back and uh, repeat their regular season success of 2021-22 in 2022-23, you might want to tamp down those expectations because I just don't Lord. see that one. I don't see that one. I think that they are, at best, a fringe playoff team. Agreed. Be back Friday. That wraps things up for us on this end. Yeah, this has been uh, fun. Phil's back on Monday. We've got um, we got plenty, plenty more though. We're in fact we're going to uh, be doing a four question Friday on Purple Daily today, and then of course we'll have more feedback from you on the Purple Daily reads the comments on Saturday. Talk to you later.